Right, I am doing the Canal River Trust questionnaire thing, consultation. They want to increase the boat licence fee to pay for the shortfall. So the first thing we've got here, which is rather strange, is a chart that they've used very odd colours, which you can hardly tell apart from each other, to show that their overall budget is 214.6 million. It's got a few things missing. Income from coronavirus job retention scheme. I'm pretty sure they milked that for a lot of money. But 214.6 million, then it says 24 million, 11% of this income, came from boat licenses. Well, 24 million isn't 11% of 214.6 million, is it? An additional 20.5 million comes from other boating income, including mooring fees, taking their total income to 20%. Currently they get 50 million from a government grant, which is a quarter of their income. That's now fixed till 2027, meaning that with inflation each year its value will erode. And the grant is sent to reduce in value by around 29% by 2027 due to the impact of inflation. Okay, forecast inflation. But inflation hasn't happened yet. The future of the grant is uncertain. The uncertainty adds to the financial challenges the trust faces. Right, uncertainty isn't a financial challenge. That's just, uncertainty is just uncertainty. But that's more hot air. Since the trust was formed, it's grown other incomes, and then they start to talk about how wonderful they are at growing their investment incomes. And then they appear to, instead of suggesting that that's solved the problems, they then seem to suggest therefore they've got to increase the license fees that it's fair enough to increase the license fees since they've since they've been so good at growing their investments maybe the license fees could grow by just a little bit not even as much as the investments the license fees which we have to pay out of our incomes which are not going up because that's what inflation is our incomes are not going up people's incomes do not go up when you have inflation. If they did, you wouldn't have inflation. Right, so there's these ambitious, they've set ambitious targets, so they're admitting that their targets are ambitious. So presumably they're also setting incredibly ambitious predictions about how our income and ability to pay this is going to grow. Fundraising income forecast to grow by 10% each year. Okay, so they think that there's people going to Give them money, 10% more money each year. That means doubling every seven years. That That's their forecast. Their forecast is that charitable and fundraising income and investment will double every seven years. That's what they say, 10% each year. They say it will double in seven years. Okay, so what about in 14 years, quadruple? That's what they say, it's right here. In black and white, 10% each year. Boat licence income contributes 11% of the annual income of the trust receives each year. Going forward, I hate that fucking word, the trust needs to consider how it grows the contribution from boat licences in order to counter the financial pressures it faces. Look, it's all such a victim. Having just blown itself up as being so good at managing its money course the underlying suggestion is that we ought to be good at managing our money too and help out the growing cost since the trust has formed its expenditure the waterway has risen by 50 percent from 94.2 millions 2013 to 14 to 141 millions in 2021 to 22 it's less than 10 years where's this excellent management Spending has risen faster than inflation. Look at that. So they're not managing the money very well, are they? If it's costing them that much more. The trust is increasing its spend. And then they get they go on about repairing masonry, updating hydraulics and electrics, 
fitting the 100 lock gate leaves. Blah, blah, blah. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a lot of this myself. I've seen some very poor lock gate repairs. I don't know what the electric stuff is that they're talking about. It needs more maintenance. Oh, towpath improvements. Seeking to secure its level of spend and water rate, ensuring that other works are just towpath maintenance. And engagement activities supported by charitable giving and other... You're right, so they're again, again, they, want, they want to improve the canals for the people walking along them who don't pay a licence. They want us to pay for it. The Trust is also seeking large increases in its expenditure on vital reservoir safety works. Okay, but they've already said that they made a lot of money on the um, waters, the actual water. Its largest spend on infrastructure was on its reservoirs, the oldest in the country. But they've already said... They have already said that um, they made fantastic income from their investments in uh, utilities and water development, 37.7 millions, and property income, 51.4 millions, which I assume covers water selling the water utility companies and water sales has grown from 24.7 million to 37.7 million that has grown by three eighths of 24 well that's grown by a massive amount that's grown by 50 percent they have grown their income from the utilities by 50 look 24.7 million okay 50 percent of that is 12.35 million. If we add that on, that comes to 37.15 million. 37.7 million is the actual figure. So it's grown by more than 50%. Their sales to utilities and water sales has grown by more than 50%. So when we go at the growing costs, about the reservoirs, They've had more than 50% growth in that, in that short period of time, from 2013-14. They've got the money in there from that. And let's face it, the money they spend on reservoirs should come from the income they make from reservoirs. They shouldn't be paid for by people that are poodling up and down the canals in their boats. If the reservoirs are collections of water to sell, then the, the sale of the water from the reservoir should pay for that. I pressed the next button, I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. The purpose of this consultation is to help them make decisions about the future, blah, blah, blah. The view of the affordability of the boat licence, your preferences regarding different approaches to amending it. You're going to find out about me, but I won't identify myself in any way. I'm a continuous cruiser. Apparently so. Which of the following describes your relationship with boating? A liverboard boater. Why did you choose boat as a continuous cruiser? How many miles do you travel each year? <laughs> Dunno, 30 to 50 I suppose. How long have you been boating? Between five and ten years. What made you start using the inland waterways for boating? A housing need. I wanted a more affordable way to live. 
and feed him the life I suppose. To experience boating on inland waterways, I wanted to try something different and interesting boats in the waterways and a family pastime. An interest in nature. What keeps you interested in and passionate about boating? <clears throat> We've got some sort of freedom thing. No, no, look. Freedom from... Uh, What do we put it? Um, I don't know what to, how to put that. Disturbance. And to move from disturbance. Looking ahead, how long do you plan to continue boating on inland waterways? Don't know. Looking ahead isn't something we're doing right now. In this section, we're going to present you with a number of possible approaches to structuring their boat license fee. Choose your preferred option from three different fee structures. The third option will always be a continuation of the current fee structure. The trust may ultimately choose to combine two or more, but you'll be asked to just pick one option. The average price is for 85663. Mine's about 700 and mine is the smallest boat practically that you can live on. So they, the boats in the smallest band pay no surcharge. Boats in the middle band pay a 10% surcharge. Boats in the largest band will pay a 15% surcharge. Yeah, so a boat that's twice the size of mine or four times the size of mine pays 15% extra. That's not fair, is it? All boaters are now going to look at different ways. <coughs> an increase would be applied to all boats. However, the current wide beam surcharge replaced by an area-based charge based on the width of the boat mod. But that's right. That's how it should be. Yes, well, I agree with that. we got the current structure where you just get a little tiny surcharge because your boat's massively fucking wide. And then they've got this, this boring compromise, which is obviously what they're going to go, go for. Because the wide beam people are going to select the third one, because they're not going to want this first one I've selected. And the people with smaller boats are going to select the first one. So again, they're still going to screw the smaller boats. They're still going to screw the narrower boats because they're going to retain it. But the current surcharge will rise. An increase will be applied to all boats. So the way they've done this, they've made it because they know that half of us are going to select A, half of us are going to collect, select C, and then they've already created B to be the one that they're going to basically do. So this isn't, they're not, they're not consulting us. No one's going to select B. I guarantee you no one's going to select B, the compromise, which is what they will do. So this won't be democratic. Now we're going to show you some more, because the reason that I selected A is fairness, and the reason that people selected C will be unfairness. They want the unfairness to continue for them. Now we're going to show you some more options. Some are different, and I will say that at the end. If they give me an option to say something, I'll say... Now we're going to show you some more options. Some are different to the ones you've seen. Some might be the same. Again, we'd like current license based on boat width and increase. Your boat. However, a higher increase would be applied to boats without a home mooring than those with a home mooring. 
They want to charge us more if we're just cruising without a home mooring. Retaining the current length of the boat with the current surcharge based on boat width would rise. However, boats with a larger width would receive a higher surcharge than they currently are. The length of the boat and the current surcharge of boats an increase would be applied to all licenses. What's boat width and home mooring got to do with each other? Well, actually, I do agree that people without a home, that people with a home mooring should not pay as much for a boat license because they don't do as much cruising. I do actually agree with that. But I don't agree that those of us without a home mooring should pay more, have an increase. Uh, but if they're just talking in a relative fashion, I actually agree with that because they're already paying. They're already paying to stick their boat somewhere. And it not have to move. And then they're not actually wanting to move. So they're not going up and down the canals and using the locks as much in theory. However, they have the right to do so as much as they would damn well like. Um, yeah, but people who live on a home mooring permanently and hardly ever cruise, I don't think, I think they should, well, I think they should pay per mile or something like that. Every time they go through a lock. Every time they go through a lock, that's how I think it should work. When you go through a lock... Then you pay. That's how they should do it. Retaining the current license fee structure based on the length of the boat and the current surcharge based on boat width. No, I don't agree with that. Retaining the current because the big fat boats don't get charged very much for their fatness. Retaining the current license fee structure based on the length of the boat, but based on boat width would also rise, would be applied to both. Okay, well, I'm going to go with that. And really, I want both of those, but I, I also agree that people with a home mooring shouldn't pay as much, but they're not giving me the option. Those two things are completely irrelevant to each other. However, the one that would be most acceptable to me is that Fat boats pay more. Pay for the fatness. Not more, but pay for the fatness. Now we're going to show you some more options. Some are different to the ones you've already seen. Choose three. Choose three. An increase should apply to be all boats. However, the current wide beam surcharge will be placed with an area based charge. Okay, so now they're giving us the area based charge as option one. Option two is retaining the license fee structure with the current surcharge based on boat width. A home increase should be applied to those boats without a home mooring. And then the third option, retaining the current license fee structure based on the length of the boat. That's exactly what they've just shown me in the last question, but with options one and two the other way around. What the hell kind of a consultation is this? If they've jumbled them up. There's, they've put the three questions in a tombola and shaken them up and asked me them again in a different order. We've put them in twice now. Okay, well, I'm going to say num the, that again because I don't really understand what, why they keep asking the same question again and again. This is very odd. In the previous question, you could say more than any other. Well, they kept asking me it. Based on, uh, it's not letting me, right. so based on the area of my boat, <clears throat> I pay up to three times what a wide beam, uh, what the owner of a large boat pays per 
per square foot. No, I'm not going to put up to three terms because I can't remember the calculation. I'm going to put, put double or more. Body, boat. Let's put wide beam. Let's be clear about it. Per square foot. Per cubic foot. Now it doesn't apply for cubic feet really because that's their water, isn't it? That's the height of the boat. I suppose I could make my boat higher in theory. I pay double or more what the owner of a wide beam pays per square foot. Wide beam owners are generally wealthier. So this um, discrepancy is a tax on the poor. I'm going to put that in capitals. Even if a wide beam owner went to a smaller downsized to a smaller vessel to try to save money they would then be charged more per square foot this is unfair and leaves boaters no option for economizing it also means the owners of small old cheap vessels are subsidizing cheap lightweight vessels the maintenance of waterways for owners of very large heavy demanding expensive vessels. This is so inherently and obviously unfair as to barely, no, I'm not even going to put, I'm just going to put, this is, there we are, this is inherently and I should say obviously why am I writing in grey? I can hardly read it. Right, so there we are. One option proposed increasing the licence fee at a higher rate for those with licence and continuously increasing the license of home mowing. To what extent do you believe that imposing a greater fee is more reasonable in the current fee structure? I think it would be, I'm going to say, a little more reasonable. <clears throat> because I don't really think increasing. I I, I think this should be balanced. You shouldn't only be looking to get more. They could reduce it slightly for people with moorings. Because the moorings go up. The cost of the mooring is very high. They could reduce it slightly for people with moorings and increase it slightly for people who are cruising. They could do a mixture of the two. I don't see that only people cruising should have to fund that difference.
Now, it's not because we don't have to pay mooring fees. It makes it sound like we're laughing and we've got the money there spare. That's not true. We use more of the canal network. That is true. No, continuous crews are not more likely to live aboard their boats. I don't agree with your state. No. No evidence has been offered for your statement that oh, well, I, can't, I can't really fit that in there as well I'm going to have to just say right, what are we doing I feel a balanced approach A balanced approach slightly reducing the cruising license for those with home moorings combined with a slight increase for cruisers rather than the blunt either rather than the blunt idea of only one group facing the rising cost would be fairer Would be fair. Next. Another option proposed replacing the width based with the total boat area length. To what extent do you believe this change would be more or less reasonable than the current license fee structure? Well, much more reasonable. Obviously, that's what they do on the Thames already. Currently, the Trust provides a 2.5 prompt discount, discount for renewing and full time. These discounts to encourage them to pay for their license in a way that reduces it. However, with the vast majority now making the license online, the current approach has achieved the aim of reducing costs. There's still benefit to the trust for timely payment. As such, they're now proposing some changes that you're now proposing to retain the discount for renewing it on time, but the discount applied to renewing your license online would be reduced to 0.5. Would you suggest the trust reducing or removing the current discounts for paying online and running the waterways, or would you call the discounts? Well, again, that's a tax on the poor who can't afford to pay it all in one go. It's another tax on the poor. I would remove the discount for paying online. I don't think there should be a two-tier system at all for the rich and for those who can go online and pay it. Nor do I think anyone should be penalised for how they pay a bill. In addition to those for renewing a licence online and on time, the Canal River Trust offer a number of other discounts to certain boats, including a 25% discount for electric boats, 10% discount for historic boats, Oh, what's a historic boat count as? 25% discount for... My boat might be a historic boat now. 25% discount for boats navigating on a disconnected waterway. Oh, so I could go on the Brecon Beacons for 25% discount. If these discounts were reduced or removed, the additional income could be no. Disconnected. I don't see why that should be discounted if you're on a disconnected waterway. Um, retain the historic boat discount if you care about the canals. I guess if you don't care about the canals and you're just going to run it as a business, although you're pretending to be a charity, then you can then you can get rid of that, can't you? So you're the the fruit of the uh, tree will reveal what the tree what. The tree is, as Matthew said.
If you don't retain that discount, then you will be revealed as a tree-bearing bad fruit. 25% electric boat discount. Um, yeah, because they're solar, most of them, which is clean energy. It's genuine clean energy, unlike the electric cars. So we should retain that, I think. Yes, I think that's a good idea. I'm, I'd be tempted to get an electric engine for my boat based on that idea. In your own words, do you have any other suggestions? Uh, a, a um, what do they call it? A toll. For going through locks. Would probably cover your entire shortfall. And only the wealthiest boaters who use the canal more and those will be paying <clears throat> Um, yeah, let's say 50p per 10 square feet. I'm going to keep it simple. Um, poorer voters would have options to reduce their lock use This would also reduce the burden on the canals and fund it where it is greatest. It worked in the past. Perhaps you should give it a chance to work again since the current approach is not working. I 
That's the only thing I can offer. As an other suggestion. To what extent do you disagree with the following about the boat, dice? I am worried that the cost of boating may make it unaffordable for me in the near future. Mm, I'm going to neither agree nor disagree. The current licence fee represents good value for money. I think I agree. It's reasonable for the Trust to increase the boat licence to further support its work on the canals. Neither agree nor disagree. I think there's probably more to it than that. Thinking about the topics. Ah... Uh, What did I say at the beginning? <laughs> um, I don't agree with the way the options were put here. It was confusing. And limited. And I feel you have already decided to go with the middle option that you have placed between two options which will clearly be chosen. The first of the two options being to more fairly charge large boats. Those with small boats will of course want this fairer system in place instated the second option to keep the unfairly low cost to large, expensive boats subsidised by a proportionately higher licence that poor boaters pay will be voted for by the large voters. You will clearly then say that you had to choose your middle option which you have already prepared and clearly want to go with Similarly, now let's just summarise that. I don't agree with the way 
you have gone about this, which is a fate. Accompli. Similarly, you know full well that a very large number of home mooring voters will vote for the continuous cruisers to pay more because they sail more. You have not offered an option of the home mooring boaters paying less or a balanced option where the cruisers pay a little more and the moorers pay a little less. Obviously, obviously, this is another fate accompli where you will say the overwhelming votes are for cruisers to pay more. You didn't offer another solution. Not even a compromise as I just described. in the previous paragraph. For this reason, for the reasons given, I have no confidence whatsoever in this consult you have already made up your minds and framed the consultation in a way to achieve the result you already Wanted consultation is simply a way of trying to make us rubber stamp it for you. The consultation itself is not fair so therefore any agreement you perceive as a result is also not fairly 
arrived at. Complete or fair. Okay, so I've said I don't agree with the way the options were put here, it was confusing and limited and I feel that you've already decided to go with the middle option that you've placed between two options which will clearly be chosen. The first of the two options being to move fairly... What? To more fair to... More fairly charge large boats. To charge large boats more. To reflect their size, those with small boats will of course want this fair system installed and stated. The second option to keep the unfairly low cost to large expensive boats subsidised by a proportionally higher licence that poor boaters pay will be voted for by the large boaters. They will want the unfairness to continue because it benefits them. In effect, you are causing half of us to vote red and half yellow, and then you will say that we all voted for green. That's actually fraudulent. especially if you designed it to achieve the green result, which reading it, I believe you did. <laughs> okay, so that's what I've put. You, right. The first of the two options being to change charge large boats more to reflect their size. Those with small boats will, of course, want this fairer system instated. The second option to keep the unfairly low-cost large expensive boats subsidised by a proportionately higher licence that poor boaters pay will be voted for by the large boaters. They will want the unfairness to continue because it benefits them. They, You will then say that you had to choose your middle option, which you already prepared and clearly had to go with, and which most boaters were not even have voted for. I will want to know how many voted for your final option. In effect, you are causing half of us to vote red. Sorry, blue. Let's put blue. <laughs> half of us to vote blue and half of us to vote yellow. And then you will say that we all voted for green. That's actually fraudulent, especially if you designed it to achieve the green result, which, reading it, I believe you did. I don't agree with the way you have gone about this, which is a fait accompli. That means a done deal. You've You've, you've designed it to achieve the result you wanted. Similarly, you know full well that a large, very large number of home boating moorers, home mooring boaters, will vote for the continuous cruisers to pay more because they sail more. You've not offered 
an option of the home mooring boaters paying less, or a balanced option where the cruisers pay a little more and the home moorers pay a little less. Obviously, this is another fait accompli where you will say the overwhelming votes for cruisers to pay more. You didn't offer another solution, not even a compromise, as I just described in the previous paragraph. For the reasons given, I have no confidence whatsoever in this consultation. You have already made up your minds and framed the consultation in a way to achieve the result you already wanted. The consultation is simply a way of trying to make us appear to agree with you. The consultation itself is not complete or fair. So, therefore, any agreement you perceive as a result is not fair, also not fairly arrived at. That's my final comments. Before we finish, what gender do you most... What's my age? What's gross household income? Range. <laughs> Are you employed full time? Do you live with other people? Do you personally rate any of these statements? <laughs> <laughs>